In this episode, I talk with one of my favorite people on the planet about why your dream life doesn't have to be a dream. Good stuff. Let's get started. You're listening to the Think Outside the Lines podcast. Practical solutions and ideas for designing the life you want with an added dose of inspiration. And now, here's your host, Sean Feeney. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Think Outside the Lines podcast. I'm Sean, and you can find me over at my website, thinkoutsidethelines.com, where I help people discover and live their passion. I believe you deserve to live the life you want, and I want to help you design it. And like I said in my intro, my guest today is truly one of my favorite people on the planet. She's traveled the world many times over. She's super brilliant. She has such a refreshing perspective on life and business. She's also one of the kindest souls you'll ever meet. It's time to think outside the lines with the lovely Aisha Zaza. All right, so are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Cool. Welcome to the show, Aisha Zaza. Thank you, Sean Feeney. And I, it's funny, I, I don't know why I always have this urge to call you Zaza Zest. Why do I have that, like, in my because, brain? Because we talked about it when I was, like, I wanted to rename my blog. And deep down, I almost wish it was called Zaza Zest. Oh, my God. But where did that, that's why? Because that's, did someone, we like, talked used about to call this you that? years ago. No, well, no, because you and I talked about, like, the name of my blog, and I wanted to call it Zaza Zest. We talked about this. Was I for it or against it? I think you were for it, but I can't remember if it was you or someone else that said it sounded like a food blog by having the word zest in it. Oh, it totally does. Yeah, it totally does. But I feel like zest is so interchangeable. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I always start off my interviews with what I refer to Mm -hmm. as the icebreaker slash lightning round of questions, Mm -hmm. um, which kind of helps the audience get to know you a bit before we dive in. Is that cool? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right greatest desire in your life at the moment? Hmm. Um, this could be anything. Yeah. It's literally however you want to answer the question. There's no right answer. Oh my gosh. I'm okay. Biggest desire is to find Valentino wedding shoes for like a super duper steep discount. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Yes. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite season? Fall. Favorite genre of music? Pop. Oh, that's why I love you. Favorite song? <laughs> um, if this can be current or like of all time. There's no pressure around this answer. This is a hard question. Uh, uh, it stumps everyone. I would say, oh my gosh, I don't know. I could tell you my favorite movie. Can we play that? (laughs) Can we play that game? Yes. Change up the questions. I love it. Yes. What is your favorite movie? (laughs) A League of Their Own. Damn it. I was hoping it was going to be something with Rich McAdams, which we'll talk about later. (laughs) Um, A League of Their Own. I expected way more from you. Favorite scent or fragrance? Favorite scent. I would say... Tropical. Okay. What is your favorite day of the year? September 23rd. Because? Because that's the day I'm going to get married next year. Oh, my God. Can't wait to talk more about that. Um, Best day of the week? Thursday. Thursday? I've never heard that yet. Why Thursday? Because I love it. It's kind of like Friday's little sister. (laughs) Where you just get like super excited, you know, it's like almost the weekend and I feel like everyone's in a good mood. It seems like a good day for happy hour. Hey, every day is a good day for happy hour. That's absolutely true. Okay. Best childhood memory. Best childhood memory. Um, I would say playing in the snow and building a snowman in Norway with my dad. Oh, wow. That's a pretty cool memory. Yeah. Uh, what's your most spiritual moment in your life thus far? Hmm. I would say going, um, I did a, like a missionary trip down to Mexico, actually with the Campelis, And there was a sermon 
that was being given one night and um, kind of had this like come to Jesus moment. And I would say that was definitely the most like spiritual of my life so far. Nice. We'll talk about who the Kimpilis are later. Um, worst job ever. Um, hmm. I've been pretty fortunate with some pretty good jobs, but really? uh huh. I would have to say Togo's. Oh God, that seems like an awful job. <laughs> you went, you win for sure. Okay, so Aisha and I have quite the history together. Uh, we know each other through my best friend Nick. Uh, I worked with you on developing a website a while ago. I don't even remember how long ago that was. It was years ago at this mm-hmm. point, right? Yeah. Um, and through that process, you've become honestly one of my most favorite people on the planet. I'm so excited for my audience to meet you today. Now, one of the things that inspires me the most about you is your passion for travel. So tell me about this passion and some of the most amazing places that you've experienced thus far. Well, I have always, I didn't grow up traveling, but I have always been really adventurous and had this like vision of seeing the world and, you know, not settling, you know, too young. I didn't want to get married young. I wanted to have my experiences. And I think what, um, you know, what drew me most to seeing the world was meeting people from all over the place and having a perspective that was different, you know, outside of my own. And so I would say I took my first big um, international trip besides when I was like four years old in Norway, when I answered your, your previous question, I went to Japan and that was such a cool experience. And I actually won the trip from a um, pageant that I was in a local pageant, which was super cool. And I just became super, super thirsty um, to see the rest of the world. And fortunately, and unfortunately, my dad for 10 years of my um, teenage life into young adulthood lived in Jordan, which is pretty cool because I got to go visit him. But of course, that was a bummer because I missed out on having him here for so long. But I got to travel to the Middle East. And I would say that was that was my second um, trip that I took. And I would say those were kind of exotic places for someone that hasn't really done a lot of traveling. And I, it really made traveling to other places that felt far away and exotic a little bit more, um, you know, reachable or easy to travel to. I, I've never really been uh, binded by how far a place is. I really just set an alert on um, TripAdvisor and I'm constantly just searching for cheap flights and I'm pretty open to go uh, wherever as long as it's somewhere new and I get to go off the beaten path a little. So as far as favorite places go, I definitely have a special, special place in my heart for Thailand because I just, if there was a place that I could have died happy after seeing, I think it would have been Thailand Um, for so many reasons. It's even more beautiful than I had ever imagined the people the culture is, you know, they're probably the nicest people, um, in the world that I've ever met and so peaceful and the food and the colors and, um, the beaches. I mean, it's honestly one of my favorite places. Um, and then lastly, I have a pretty special heart or special place in my heart for Spain as well. I did a study abroad program there for a summer with one of my best friends and it's definitely one of my favorite years of my life, I got to live with a Spanish family that spoke no English. And we walked to class, you know, about two miles every day. So I really felt like that was the most comfortable I became in a place that I had traveled because I developed a routine and really got to know Sevilla and, um, you know, travel places on the weekends and stuff. But that was the closest I felt to really immersing myself in another culture. I love it. How do you think that your passion for travel has inspired your desire to become an entrepreneur? The time freedom, to be honest. I really want the opportunity to go where I want and when I want. And I don't want to be bound by two weeks a year. I don't really want to feel like I can't, um, you know, plan a vacation with my paid time off and not account for things that you don't know are coming your way, you know, family illnesses or emergencies that you might have to step away for. 
So time freedom is one of the biggest influences um, that I correlate with traveling and being able to go wherever I want for however long. Very cool. Now, aside from your, you have a travel blog, um, themiddleofhere.com, which we're going to talk about a little bit more later. But um, you've also recently begun a journey into network marketing, which I think is amazing because I think you're representing a new generation of people who see the field as the best way to generate residual income. Um, Can you talk a little bit about your journey into network marketing and what has inspired you to become involved? That's a great question. And unlike a lot of people, I really, um, I didn't feel like I had that big of a need or um, a reason why I wanted to start a business, which is funny because now it's crystal clear to me, but it wasn't on my radar. Let's just say that. And I didn't, um, fortunately, I was not in a place where I needed that stream of income. I had a full-time job, um, you know, doing marketing as a marketing director. I lived where I wanted to live. I felt like I had a pretty flexible life um, thus far. And uh, network marketing and starting a business was not on my radar at all. Um, But fortunately, I was open-minded to it. And once I did my research and saw the potential that I had, you know, I started to look at my life and ask myself, if I keep doing what I'm doing, where do I see myself in five years? And really that was the gut wrenching question that made me take a more serious look into starting a business. Um, because that question, quite frankly, made me a little bit sick to my stomach. And I realized the things that I wanted to do with my life regard in regards to traveling and time freedom and financial freedom, while things were fine, of course I want to have more so I can also give more. And that's a huge part of the reason why I started a business with, um, you know, a network marketing as well. I love that. Why do you think this generation is suddenly seeing the value of working for themselves? I think a lot of it has to do with our parents' generation and the unfaithfulness of the nine to five, you know, 40 year career. I know personally, I mean, my mom struggled a lot and she couldn't find job security where it was said to be promised. And um, it just didn't seem like a good fit. It didn't seem like a fit for my life. I just think traveling, you know, commuting and being in the rat race and what you think is a 40 hour week job turns into a 60 hour week job. And then top of commuting, I just felt like you're living to work and not working to live. Wow. That's powerful and true. (laughs) Um, I think that's, that's such an issue today, especially, I mean, I think to your point, you're not guaranteed anything forever. Like I know that like, um, my grandparents both had jobs that, you know, they had a pension at the end waiting for them at least. Um, in some sort of like retirement to live off of, but we just don't have that anymore today. Unless you, you know, invest yourself in something like a 401k or whatever, you don't have that money waiting for you at the end. And so I think it is so important to look for other, you know, income streams and what have you. Yeah, absolutely. Now, many aspiring entrepreneurs feel stuck in their progress or they don't really know even where to begin. Um, and you know, we often hear things like, well, just get started or just take action. But if you don't know what that action is supposed to be, that advice really isn't helpful. Right. So do you have like a tangible piece of advice that you would give someone who wants to get started, but doesn't really quite know where or how? Well, I think that depends on, you know, not everyone is cut out for network marketing and that's, um, for sure. But in my advice to someone, let's say that was interested in making a big change in their life and maybe network marketing was something that they would be serious into looking into, um, I would just really ask them to evaluate what their life looks like now and what they can expect it to look like a year, two years, five years down the road if they keep doing what they're doing. And sadly, I think that people people just kind of float along instead of really um, seeing potential elsewhere because most of the time things are fine and things are fine until they're not fine. And then you, then the panic button is pushed and um, you know, the freak out begins. And unfortunately that's a little bit too late to get started. And so my advice is um, 
have a vision. You know, what kind of movie do you play in your head when you think about your life in five years? And I think that's such a, it's contrary to what we were always asked, like growing up, where do you, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? You know, where do you see yourself in five years? And I don't think that's, it's not a case of like, where do I see myself? I could see myself living my dream life. But the real question is, where do you see yourself if you keep doing what you're doing? And that is the more serious and intimate question that you have to have, um, you know, an answer for yourself. And so I think it really just depends on what someone's passion is, you know, read, ask questions, start reading blogs. Like, you know, the more information that you can have regarding any field or hobby or passion that you want to pursue the best thing that you can do is become educated about it and then figure out the right questions to ask because you could be closer to starting than you think you are. Totally. I want to talk a little bit more about, because I'm hearing and I love this shift that's happened with you because I remember when you first started your kind of network marketing journey, um, we both would have conversations about like, it's not happening or like, you know what I mean? Like there's, it's, it takes time to build a business or whatever. And it sounds like you finally have accepted that. And as a result of that, you've become successful. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. This is where people make it in this career. And this is where people don't, I think, because um, there's a system, you know, in place for success. And as long as you're really doing the do and you don't quit, I just, there's like a 1% chance of failure. And what the shift was for me was committing to the work when the results were not showing up because we've become this really impatient society that um, looks at these types of businesses or opportunities and think, okay, well, in three months from now, I want to be making $5,000. And I'm sorry, but that sounds like a scam to me. And when I explain to people what I do and how I teach and train others to have a successful business, I mean, if you were talking to any other consultant, you know, that had a corporate job, would you, you know, would you feel like it was appropriate to ask them after three months, like how their clientele base was going or how much money they were bringing in with their practice or, you know, whatever it is that they were doing. So I really started to look at this as a real business opportunity instead of just something that was going to be a supplemental income. And um, obviously with any other type of business, you're bound to that business and the stakes are high. And why I think it's easy for people to walk away from network marketing is because if the results aren't showing up, it's easy to walk away from. You don't really have much invested. And so I started playing this game as if I had $500,000 invested into this business. And it turns out your sense of urgency becomes <laughs> greater when um, you're, you're pushing like, like it's a real traditional conventional business. Do you think network, network marketing is something that anyone can do? Or do you think it requires a special skill set? I think that people come to the table with lots of different skills and some people more than others. But I, most mostly I think that what's required can be developed. So that's kind of a double edge sword, I think, because though people can have a lot of skill coming to the table and have qualities that people might deem as successful, um, I think it takes things that can be acquired, um, like perseverance, you know, determination, having a vision for what you want, developing leadership skills. You know, nobody was born a leader. I don't believe that they were developed into one. So I think it can be for anybody that's willing to develop themselves and become a better version of themselves than they are when they start. Okay, so I'm 21 years old. Not really, I wish I was, but I'm 21 years old. I just graduated college. Why should I get into network marketing right now? Well, you have a lot of time to make it work for sure. And I think that with, um, without that fresh mind and that fresh attitude, um, coming right out of college, 
um, or maybe not, I'm not, you didn't actually say that you were in college, but let's assume that you did finish college and now you're picking a career. I would say do this on the side of whatever it is you're building and see which one you like best, because I don't believe that you need to waste 30 years of your life to decide, okay, I actually value my time freedom more than I do quote unquote job security, you know, which may or may not be there. So I think it's a fantastic option for younger people or maybe newly grad, newly graduate, um, students because they have all the time, you know, in the world to either be looking for a job, working a job and having the energy to, um, you know, put into something else without maybe having the commitment of a family or a house or a mortgage. I just think it could be such an incredible, um, you know, supplemental income that, can develop into a full-time income. Absolutely. And that's part of the reason I asked that question is just because I think that we're conditioned to believe, especially once we're in college, that, you know, the path should look a certain way. Um, And I think that the brilliant thing about network marketing in particular is it kind of just blows all that apart and shows you that it can look however you want it to. Mm -hmm. Um, You just kind of have to take control of that. So good answers. What is a challenge that you've encountered along the way? And maybe it's something that you could help someone else not have to face? Uh, Fear. I think fear drives a lot of people. And um, fear and faith are both invisible, right? They're things that we make up in our mind. And so having faith um, in something just means that you believe it to be so before you have the results or the proof. Um, And unfortunately, I think fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. And so by keeping ourselves or, you know, myself back, holding back it all, all of, you know, the things that have stopped me from growing either faster or, um, um, mainly just faster, I suppose, is my fear of, well, what are they going to think of me? What if, this doesn't work out. You know, what if I invest all this time and it's not worth it? And what you have to know is that it's just going to be worth it. Um, and really doing, doing your job with a decided heart and realizing that no matter what happens in your business, that you're in it for the long haul. Um, as soon as you, as soon as you waver in your belief in what you're doing, fear will, it's a cancer. It will take over and doubt will slip into your mind and completely rule how you think. And so I would say get over the fear because what that means is you're making it about yourself, you know, and I guess making it about yourself kind of goes hand in hand with my answer of letting go of fear. I think the worst thing that you can do about becoming a leader and a successful business person is really to become a servant leader, you know, to other people. And when you make it about other people, then it doesn't matter what people think of you, you know, or what people are going to say to you. You're, those are all about you. So once you can let that go, you have this restored confidence that just allows you to filter through the people that say no, the people that ignore you, uh, the people that show interest and never get back to you. I mean, tons of things happen in this business, but really it's just having a decided heart and not, not being afraid of the outcome so long as you're putting the work in. I'm so fascinated by fear in in general and just in life. Uh, and the fact that it's one of those things that feels like we're not ever supposed to talk about, but if we were to talk about it more, life could be so different for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that because to your point fear holds everyone back from doing something at some point in their life and what's interesting to me is every single person has that same fear of what will people think of me you know and we all have the same fear like why don't we help each other with that you know and we just we don't do that enough Mm -hmm. what are some of your personal tips for getting over or maybe more importantly working through your fears reading I read a lot of personal development books because I think that you come to the table shaped, you know, by your life circumstances. Um, and 
when I was referring to things that can be developed, I think developing yourself into a different person as a business owner and leader requires reading and educating yourself and seeking wisdom constantly because let's face it, if we have this fear, you know, instilled in us of what people will think, or what if I fail, or what if this, you come to the table wired already, you're never going to be successful if all you know how to do is react to situations the way that you've always reacted in other jobs, or you're only going to know how to talk to people the, you know, to the extent that you've had communication in, you know, the office or with your other jobs. And so I think the best thing that you can do to overcome fear is really develop leadership skills. And the more you feel your confidence in what you're doing, the less fearful you become. Awesome. What motivates you most in life? Not to sound super cheesy, but to leave a legacy and really make an impact. I think my day is most fulfilled when I've made someone smile or feel good or have changed their life, you know, by offering them a really awesome business opportunity. Um, and that would be the, the higher end of that, but really on the smallest scale, I believe in investing time in other people and making an impact on on the world. It's so, why do we say that sounds cheesy? Like we always preface it before we say something like that because everybody does that too. It's like the fear thing. It's like we all do it. And (laughs) it's so weird to me because it's like, that is, that's completely not cheesy. Like that's the reason I'm doing this podcast. You know what I mean? It's because I want to make an impact and I want to help people with their lives. So like why, I just want to digress for a second and talk about that. Like why do we think that that's cheesy? Like why do we live in a world where we've been conditioned to believe that like, oh, well, I don't want to sound cheesy, but like, I want to save the world, you know? (laughs) That's, yeah, that's really funny. And that's funny that I even gave that disclaimer. I think because these things feel like they take an army to do, or it takes really, you know, like inventing something that's going to like physically change the world. Or um, I think that we we've lost sight of how we can really leave the world in a better place just by changing our attitude and our perspective and our manners, you know, towards other people. So I think at large, it sounds like a bigger feat than it actually is. So I think I, that's, that's what I've got for that. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's, and that's perfect. Like there is not a right answer to that question per se. I just, I am fascinated by it. And I do think that, I think maybe sometimes it's because we don't think that as one person we can change the world, but I think what we can do is, and and that might not be true, but, um, or that rather that might be true, but I think we can, to your point, take little actions every day to try to make the world a better place and leave things better than we found them, which is one of my favorite expressions. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like you're definitely on the track for that. So kudos to you. Thank you. Um, who is someone that's really inspired you in your life? My mom. Because? <laughs> <laughs> My mom, because. Um, for lots of reasons, but I think mostly she's taught me to believe in myself and to go for my dreams, you know, big or small, she's instilled this confidence in me to believe that the answer is always no until you ask and you'll never make it unless you try, you know, these types of, of theories that of course we think all kids should be taught. But I think my mom really, instead of telling me to do so, she just was that way. And so she led by example, being a single mother and, working so hard to make sure that I had everything that I needed, you know, basketball practice and piano lessons. And I was in every play that you can imagine and staying on top of my homework and just being super class president, like always super, super involved. And she really let me believe that there were no boundaries to what I could do. And so I always just juggled 
a million things because I wanted to do what I loved, you know, even if it meant literally working like clockwork, you know, getting from this practice to this practice and then back here and then, you know, back to school and then back to piano lessons and all this stuff. So she's really displayed independence and, um, you know, my entire life. I mean, she, she's just been so independent and having to raise me, you know, by herself and, and still keep up with everything that she had, you know, our house and commuting to her 50 hour a week job and commuting an hour each way and, you know, making dinner. And I mean, she really just was superwoman. So the answer is always no until you ask. That was like an Oprah aha moment for me just now. I'm going to keep that with me always. That was amazing. Um, I love that so much. Good. Now, you can recommend, you mentioned that you like to read. So you can recommend one book to someone who is looking to improve their life. What book is it? The Seven Decisions by Andy Andrews. I love that you just came to that answer so quickly. That's amazing. Oh, um, I, I know it. It's it's a life changer, game changer. So I've never heard of this book. You need to just tell me about it for just a second. So Andy Andrews, it's a quick and um, it's not like this super heavy read, but I wish I had the book in front of me to actually go through the seven decisions very quickly. But um, he goes through like making the... Um, persistent decision, making the responsible decision, the um, basically all of these decisions that will lead you to, um, you know, personal growth and personal success, either in your life or in your business. And really the theme of the book at large is taking accountability for where you are in your life and not really blaming your past circumstances or your education or your parents or your boyfriend or your husband, whatever that looks like. Um, really, really taking ownership of you are where you are today because of the decisions you made and you can only move forward from there. Um, and then, you know, being persistent, average people don't, don't give up when they get tired. Um, you will persist without exception and it doesn't matter what that looks like because he uses this example in the book, like a, a child doesn't ask how long will it take for me to learn to walk? They just do so, you know, they would never ask the question because the answer doesn't matter. They're just going to do it until they learn to walk. And I think that really spoke to me because it helped me gain a perspective on my patients with, you know, what I want my life to look like and my business and that all good things are worth working really hard for. And I think that's a sense of what we've kind of lost these days too, is wanting immediate results. And absolutely. So, I mean, it's, it's such a good book. You have to read it, like order it right now. Oh my God. I can't wait. I'm going to, um, what are some other tools and tricks that you use to stay inspired or motivated? I listen to a lot of SoundCloud, um, you know, podcast type of things. I love hearing real live raw results from people that, um, you know, that aren't, famous or famous as we know, um, you know, in, in Hollywood and and things like that, because I think the real blood, sweat and tears can be related to a little bit easier when people have similar circumstances to us, i.e. like real life, (laughs) not endless funds and, um, people to run around and do everything that we need for us and all that. So, I plug into podcasts and and SoundCloud a lot for different types of trainings and motivation. I also, um, to be honest, I love just listening to music and going to the gym. That's when I think I think the most. So kind of zoning out a little and just putting some good beats on and getting a good run. And I love that um, what you said about the podcast that you listen to and actually. Um you you described why I wanted to start this podcast and I know that we talked a lot about it before I actually like took the action and did it but um I think that the stories of people who are getting started still new at something um facing challenges to your point not the people that have you know the, the millions of dollars in the bank already I think those stories 
have a place, absolutely, and they're fascinating to hear oftentimes, but I do think that the stories of the people who are faced with the challenges right here, right now, are much more impactful. And that is why I wanted to start this podcast and put this stuff out there in the world because I don't think there's enough of it. So thank you for saying that. Um, You have unlimited money and resources. How will you change the world? This is a tough question. (laughs) I, I, you know, I think what I would do to be honest is have some kind of educational course on real life, everything I would teach, you know, high school students how to save their money, how to spend their money, how to invest their money, um, what the value of it is when you only have so much. Because I think that's such a big deal. I'm really passionate about not living in debt. And it's just crazy how people live outside their means and, and why they do so and the pressures that they feel to like live up to some standard. And so I'd love to put together some like life course about like the seven decisions by Andy Andrews, plus how to invest your money and how to save it and how to spend it. And (laughs) this all encompassing how to be really good at life. Oh my God. What can we, can we do a segment on relationships in there too? How to not like suck at love. Yes, absolutely. I'll write that one. Um, I absolutely am with you and I I will help you create this course. This can be our new life's mission because (laughs) I am so like on board with this. I think that we, the things that we learn like in the education system, especially in America, which is a whole nother topic for another day, but um, it's, it doesn't help us once we get out into the world. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. yeah, maybe have some like basic math skills and hopefully you can read and write and such, but like we don't know how to do the important things and it's so like taxes and, you know, balancing a checkbook and like all these really important things. So I'm right there with you. We're going to get started on that course tomorrow. (laughs) What is your definition of success and have you achieved it? My definition of success is evolving. It's, it's always evolving because I think you can, you can set a goal and reach it, but then what, you know, I don't think, I don't believe in, arriving at a certain point in your life or arriving at a figure on your check, you know, monthly. Um, I think there's always, always room for growth. So I would say that's kind of a hard question to answer, but I would say um, success for me personally would look like living debt-free being able to help my, my family and my friends, um, do the things that they would want to do without having to really blink twice about it. Um, I would say it would also be teaching my own children how to become better people or good people, not even better people. They never started as people. So (laughs) teaching them how to be a good person, um, and, just instill, instill the many things that I've learned in my life and hope that they can also pass on their knowledge, you know, that they've learned from me to expose the world to a different perspective and, you know, to be loving and forgiving and patient and driven, all these things. So I don't know, that was kind of a my answer was like flailing everywhere. So I don't know if I really answered you, but I mean, it was good. No, it was great. Okay. And speaking of children, you just got engaged recently. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, and that's the whole Rachel McAdams story. I think that we alluded to earlier when you were choosing your, was it your engagement picture? It, they were a save the date photos. Save the date photos. Yeah. You had sent me like a few different options. <laughs> and I think what I told you that one of them reminded me of like a Rachel McAdams movie poster. <laughs> yes. And, <laughs> And I think if I'm not mistaken, that's the one you went with. I did actually. Okay. So my well, eye for good branding and good marketing is, is spot on then. Oh, it's a hundred percent. It got me thinking. Cause I was like, well, if Rachel McAdams stands for like all time love movies, then I've got to go with that one. 
Absolutely. What we're presenting. Absolutely. So speaking of children and engagements and marriage and all those good things, what do you hope the world looks like five years from now? I hope it looks a little bit more like people being present, kids being present instead of wrapped up in their phones and iPads and technology. And I really just hope that this technology time suck starts to reverse at some point. And it's crazy to think that it would. Um, but I don't know, I, I think for myself, and hopefully I'm not speaking just for myself, but um, on behalf of maybe some of my generation that I want to be present. And I hope that people just are more present and speak to each other instead of texting and communicating and just always Instagramming and, you know, commenting and all this stuff. So in five years from now, I hope, I hope we start to see faces look up and interact with one another. It's so amazing that you said that. Cause I actually was interviewing someone the other day that said something very similar to that. Um, and it, it's so weird that it's so true. Um, they actually spoke specifically to like the reversal of what's going on now. And, um, if that's even possible, I think that somewhere in there it's possible. I don't know exactly what it would look like, but I do think that it's possible because I think we are longing for this connectivity. Um, and so we go into these like, you know, devices and we go on Facebook and Instagram and whatever social media preference you have, um, seeking that out. But the reality is that it's actually not there. It's right in front of you and it's the Mm -hmm. person sitting next to you. Um, And so I love that mentality. That's actually, I think there's an idea in there somewhere with your life course um, on how we solve that problem because I actually don't see it getting better anytime soon. I'd like to think that, you know, maybe five years or something from now it could be better, but it's just so crazy. Like you go out and, and I'm guilty of it, you know, at times myself, but you just, you go out and on a Saturday and everyone is staring down at their phones and it's people hanging out with their kids. And it's, I don't know, like it just, it makes me so depressed sometimes. Mm -hmm. So there's hope though, right? We'll make it happen. One, one iPhone at a time. Absolutely. Um, so put your iPhone down when you're with your kids. I think that's like my biggest pet peeve. Like, yes, there's like, I don't know. I'm out with my friends and whatever, and I shouldn't be doing it either. But when I see people with their kids that aren't paying attention, that's when I feel really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you believe to be the message that you were brought here to share with the world? I believe I was put here to let people think really big. I think the message, like an all-encompassing message would be your dream life doesn't have to be a dream and in short to go for it, seek the knowledge, seek the inspiration, you know, seek the people that have done it um, and ask questions and just go do it one decision at a time. You can start to live the life that you dreamed. And that goes back to, you know, my traveling. Like I didn't know how I would travel the world. I I had no idea. I mean, how do you start eating an elephant, right? They say one bite at a time. And really that's how every opportunity that I, that I had, I just would look and book. I would look for a flight and book it because the answer really to everything is like, it's not ever going to be a convenient time for you to make a big change or to go on that vacation or, you know, or this or that you'll keep putting it off. And so um, having, having the vision for it and then just taking the steps to do it. And then all of a sudden you are living like this big, awesome, crazy, you know, dream life. So just go for it. I mean, time is going to pass one way or another without, with or without the decisions that you make. Your dream life doesn't have to be a dream. I love that so much. I think you just found the title for this episode. I'm super stoked. <laughs> good good job. You're doing my work for me. Um, earlier you mentioned legacy and I know you've talked a little bit about it, but what, what do you hope will be your legacy? I hope that people will think of me as something extra, something that made them 
really happy, you know, or someone that made them really happy or maybe something that I said or being around me made them feel really loved and cared about. And I think that, um, you know, my legacy will, will be serving and helping other people. And I mean that in big and small ways, whether it is making their day and being that something extra or leading them to a completely different direction, you know, towards their dream life. Well, as someone who adores you, I can tell you that you are on track for all of that, my dear. So thank thank you. you. Aisha, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I am so grateful to know you. And I just, I really believe that you were put on this earth to accomplish amazing things. Like I said, I think you're on track for that. Um, And I just, I know that endless success lies ahead for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Um, you. Absolutely. Tell me, tell us where we can connect with you on the web. You can find me at my blog, www.themiddleofhere.com. And I'm posting about everything I'm up to in life from my business to my travels to life, fitness, you name it. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure, Sean. I had a blast. Thank you so much for having me and I'll talk with you next time. All right. I want to thank Aisha so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed our interview and I hope you did too. If you are enjoying the podcast, please head over to iTunes and be sure to subscribe. And while you're there, please share your thoughts with a quick review. I would really appreciate it. You can find the links for everything we talked about today in the show notes, which are available at thinkoutsidethelines.com slash podcast. Until next time, go out there and do what makes you happy. And remember, the best way to predict the future is to create it. For more information, please visit thinkoutsidethelines.com.